In the twenty-third year of Joash, the son of Ahaziah, king of Judah, Jehoaz, the son of Jehu, began to reign over Israel in Samaria, and he reigned seventeen years. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and followed the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which he made Israel to sin. He did not depart from them. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he gave them continually into the hand of Hazael, king of Syria, and into the hand of Ben-Hadad, the son of Hazael. Then Jehoaz besought the Lord, and the Lord listened to him, for he saw the oppression of Israel, how the king of Syria oppressed them. Therefore the Lord gave Israel a savior, so that they escaped from the hand of the Syrians, and the sons of Israel dwelt in their homes as formerly. Nevertheless, they did not depart from the sins of the house of Jeroboam, which he made Israel to sin, but walked in them, and the Asherah also remained in Samaria. For there was not left to Jehoaz an army of more than fifty horsemen, and ten chariots, and ten thousand footmen. For the king of Syria had destroyed them, and made them like the dust at threshing. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoaz, and all that he did, and his might, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Jehoaz slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria. And Joash his son reigned in his stead. In the thirty-seventh year of Joash king of Judah, Jehoash the son of Jehoaz began to reign over Israel and Samaria, and he reigned sixteen years. He also did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and he did not depart from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which he made Israel to sin, but he walked in them. Now the rest of the acts of Joash, and all that he did, and the might with which he fought against Amaziah, king of Judah, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the king of Israel? So Joash slept with his fathers, and Jeroboam sat upon the throne, and Joash was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. Now when Elisha had fallen sick with the illness of which he was to die, Joash king of Israel went down to him, and wept before him, crying, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And Elisha said to him, Take a bow and arrows. And he took a bow and arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, Draw the bow. And he drew it. And Elisha laid his hands upon the king's hands, and he said, Open the window eastward. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, Shoot. And he shot. And he said, The Lord's arrow of victory, the arrow of victory over Syria. For you shall fight the Syrians in Aphek until you have made an end of them. And he said, Take the arrows. And he took them. And he said to the king of Israel, Strike the ground with them. And he struck three times and stopped. Then the man of God was angry with him and said, You should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck down Syria until you had made an end of it. But now you will strike down Syria only three times. So Elisha died, and they buried him. Now bands of Moabites used to invade the land in the spring of the year. And as a man was being buried, behold, a marauding band was seen, and the man was cast into the grave of Elisha. And as soon as the man touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood on his feet. Now Hazael, king of Syria, oppressed Israel all the days of Je Jehoaz. But the Lord was gracious to them, and had compassion on them, and he turned toward them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and would not destroy them, nor has he cast them from his presence until now. When Hazael, king of Syria, died, Ben-Hadad his son became king in his stead. Then Jehoash, the son of Jehoaz, took again from Ben-Hadad the son of Hazael the cities which he had taken from Jehoaz, his father in war. Three times Joash defeated him and recovered the cities of Israel. In the second year of Joash, the son of Joahaz, king of Israel, Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, began to reign. He was twenty-five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty-nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jehoadin of Jerusalem, and he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, yet not like David his father. He did in all things as Joash his father had done, but the high places were not removed. The people still sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. And as soon as the royal power was firmly in his hand, he killed his servants who had slain the king his father. But he did not put to death the children of the murderers, according to what was written in the book of the law of Moses, where the Lord commanded, The fathers shall not be put to death for the children, or the children be put to death for the fathers. 
but every man shall die for his own sin. He killed ten thousand Edomites in the Valley of Salt, and took Selah by storm, and called it Jokthiel, which is its name to this day. Then Amaziah sent messengers to Jehoash, the son of Jehoaz, son of Jehu, king of Israel, saying, Come, let us look one another in the face. And Jehoash, king of Israel, sent word to Amaziah, king of Judah, a thistle in Lebanon sent to a cedar in Lebanon, saying, Give your daughter to my son for a wife. And a wild beast of Lebanon passed by and trampled down the thistle. You have indeed struck down Edom, and your heart has lifted you up. Be content with your glory and stay at home. For why should you provoke trouble so that you fall, you and Judah with you? But Amaziah would not listen. So Jehoash king of Israel went up, and he and Amaziah king of Judah faced one another in battle at Beth Shemesh, which belongs to Judah. And Judah was defeated by Israel, and every man fled to his home. And Jehoash king of Israel captured Amaziah king of Judah, the son of Jehoash, son of Ahaziah, at Beth Shemesh, and came to Jerusalem, and broke down the wall of Jerusalem for four hundred cubits, from the Ephraim gate to the corner gate. And he seized all the gold and silver, and all the vessels that were found in the house of the Lord, and in the treasuries of the king's house, also hostages, and he returned to Samaria. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoash, which he did, and his might, and how he fought with Amaziah king of Judah, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Jehoash slept with his fathers, and was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. And Jeroboam his son reigned in his stead. Amaziah the son of Joash, king of Judah, lived fifteen years after the death of Jehoash son of Jehoaz, king of Israel. Now the rest of the deeds of Amaziah are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish. But they sent after him to Lachish, and slew him there. And they brought him upon horses, and he was buried in Jerusalem with his fathers in the city of David. And all the people of Judah took Azariah, who was sixteen years old, and made him king instead of his father Amaziah. He built Elath and restored it to Judah after the king slept with his fathers. In the fifteenth year of Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, began to reign in Samaria, and he reigned forty-one years. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and he did not depart from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which he made Israel to sin. He restored the border of Israel from the entrance of Hamath as far as the sea of the Arabah, according to the word of the Lord, the God of Israel, which he spoke by his servant Jonah, the son of Amittai, the prophet, who was from Gath-Hefer. For the Lord saw that the affliction of Israel was very bitter, for there was none left, bond or free, and there was none to help Israel. But the Lord had not said that he would blot out the name of Israel from under heaven. So he saved them by the hand of Jeroboam, the son of Joash. Now the rest of the acts of Jeroboam, and all that he did, and his might, how he fought, and how he recovered for Israel, Damascus, and Hamath, which had belonged to Judah, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Jeroboam slept with his fathers, the kings of Israel, and Zechariah his son reigned in his stead. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Give praise, O servants of the Lord, you that stand in the house of the Lord in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing to his name, for he is gracious. For the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself, Israel as his own possession. For I know that the Lord is great, and that our Lord is above all gods. Whatever the Lord pleases, he does, in heaven and on earth, in the seas and all deeps. He it is who makes the clouds rise at the end of the earth, who makes lightnings, for the rain, and brings forth the wind from his storehouses. He it is who struck the firstborn of Egypt, both of man and of beast, who, in your midst, O Egypt, sent signs and wonders against Pharaoh and all his servants, who struck many nations and slew mighty kings, Sihon, king of the Amorites, and Og, king of Bashan, and all the kingdoms of Canaan, 
and gave their land as a heritage, a heritage to his people Israel. Your name, O Lord, endures forever. Your renown, O Lord, throughout all ages. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, procuring a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to befall him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Who do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he, so if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word which he had spoken. Of those whom you gave me, I lost no one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the chalice which the Father has given me? So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews seized Jesus and bound him, for they had led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had given counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. As this disciple was known to the high priest, he entered the court of the high priest along with Jesus, while Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the maid who kept the door, and brought Peter in. The maid who kept the door said to Peter, Are not you also one of this man's disciples? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. It is all too easy to content ourselves with the regular stuff of life. Two tales from today's reading take aim at our spiritual complacency. The prophet Elisha tells the king to perform prophetic actions of victory, to shoot a bow and to strike the ground with a fistful of arrows. While the king obeys, he exhibits complacency, a lack of interest in the prophet's spiritual antics, and he only strikes the ground three times with the arrows. If the king will give only half-heartedly to God, then he will receive only half of a victory. When Jesus pronounces his divine and messianic identity with the words, Ego emi, I am, the, bev the bevy of soldiers and officials who have come to arrest him fall to the ground involuntarily. The soldiers proceed with the arrest, seemingly oblivious of who is before them and the miraculous sign they have witnessed. When Jesus knocks us down with his words, we should probably pause and reconsider what we're doing. What complacency is God trying to shake you out of?